everyone and welcome back to Amity Bloom. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. I'm really excited to finally be able to share an updated version of my Traveler's Notebook Junk Journal Insert Tutorial. This time I'm going to be creating one for myself and it's going to be a layered Traveler's Notebook which I'm very excited to start making. So the first thing that we're going to need is a template. I suggest working with the template, that way you know exactly what size you want to use. I have printed out this template, which is in my shop right now. I will leave a link below to my shop. I created templates for most popular sizes for Traveler's Notebooks, in case you want to create your own journal, if you want to create a folder, um, a dashboard, anything for a Traveler's Notebook will be there. So here's my template, which I will be cutting out and using to create my cover. As well as your template, you're going to want to use some type of paper or cardstock to make the paper base of your cover. I'm going to be making a paper traveler's notebook, and I really want my papers to be the main focal point. Behind all of the papers and the paper bloom packs, there's this piece of cardstock to keep it nice and structured when it's in shipping. And this piece of cardstock I'm going to be using to create a cover. So the idea behind this is that you can use it to create journals, to decorate your journals. It's essentially a paper lover's um, like dream little paper parcel. And I really hope that you all fall in love with it as much as I love the papers that are included inside of it. Here's the cardstock that I have already folded in half to create my Traveler's Notebook cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my template and I'm going to use it to cut the excess off of my cardstock cover. So my template has been cut and now I can use it to see how much excess I need to trim off from my cardstock paper. And because I'm going to have a chunky insert, I want to leave a couple of centimeters extra. However, if you like to have regular sized Traveler's Notebook inserts, then definitely cut along the line. However, for me, since I know how chunky I like to make my journals, I'm going to leave a little bit extra space. So let me grab my paper trimmer. I have about a quarter inch excess, and that's perfect for the amount of papers that I want to put inside my Traveler's Notebook. So that's a very big tip. If you know you're going to put a lot of pages, make sure you extend the size of your TN the base of your cover so that it covers all of your papers so you don't have papers that are hanging out of your traveler's notebook because they will become brittle and sometimes they can tear. So I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock and this time I'm going to use my insert. I am going to cut it exactly as the size that's on my template. Now I'm just going to make sure that it fits within the cover and it does. What I want to do is I want to cut a little bit off from the top so that it's more centered. So now that I have the base of my cover ready, it's time to choose the papers. And this is honestly my favorite part, choosing the paper that you want your cover to be made from. And I have this one here. Let's see. I really love this one. It's, oh my goodness, this floral just melts my heart. Ooh, this one looks really beautiful. Okay, that might need to be... That will definitely be paired up with that one. So I have my three papers selected as well as my cover pieces. These are the papers that I chose for my paper bloom packs. This is some antique wallpaper. This is some vintage wallpaper. It has a shiny texture to it and it's really elegant. And then this is some beautiful craft paper. So let me put my layered piece aside and let's work with the base of the cover. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to see how much the craft cardstock will cover. I'm just applying some glue here and I'm using fabric glue even though we are working with paper. This glue is one of my favorites. Now I'm going to add my craft paper right in the middle here. Hopefully you can see on camera, I still have a little piece peeking out from here and on the bottom. So this is when you can use washi tape or you can use some paper and I want to create layers in my cover. So I'm going to be using some piano paper to use on the top and on the bottom to kind of give it a border. Add the glue and I'm just going to place it right on the bottom and then just place it right on the top and bottom. Beautiful. And I will be passing all of this through my sewing machine later on. 
Now you want to turn it around and you can decide if you want to trim these pieces of paper off, if you want to fold them. So now I'm just trimming off the excess paper. Now what you want to do is you want to fold it over. I'm going to take my bone folder. Now that my traveler's notebook, the base of it, is nice and ready, you can then decide if you want to cover the spine. I like to take my paper and fold it in half so that I know exactly where I need to place it on my spine. This way, both the front and the back is the same size. I'm gonna take some glue, and just like what we've already been doing, just add the glue and add your paper to the spine. There we go. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And now you just want to turn that over. And now you have this little piece left over. I just trim that right off. Here is the base of my cover. So now what you want to do is put your cover aside. And we're going to work on your other piece of cardstock that you cut to be smaller than your cover, a little bit smaller. This is where I'm going to add this really beautiful floral design. All that you want to do is just add some glue. And now I'm going to add the side that I want my wallpaper to be. I think I want right there. Perfect. All I'm going to do is take my scissors and cut the excess off. So this is what you should have right now. A piece of paper similar to the size of your traveler's notebook with the paper of your choice and then I also went ahead and I added a backing to it and this is just some music paper from the paper bloom pack so you should have this I also went ahead and I picked out some decorative papers and some decorative elements to use for the cover of our traveler's notebook and to give it that layered look I have some pink craft paper I have this beautiful, beautiful paper that looks like tile and I really want to put that as the focal point. I have some embossed paper and everyone will be getting in the big paper bloom pack these embossed papers in four different colors. This one, of course, is my favorite. I have a piece of some ledger paper, some French paper, and everyone will also be getting an antique calling card. So I really want to use these elements on the front portion of my traveler's notebook. I do want to put a pocket, so this paper, this gorgeous paper, will be a pocket right here on the bottom. I don't want to cover up that little font from the piano paper. So I'm going to be sewing that onto the cover. And I have this beautiful French receipt. And I want to add that right up here at the top. I was thinking of putting the calling card, but I actually, I think I love the wallpaper a little bit more. I really like how that wallpaper looks. And then I have some embossed paper, which is also included in the paper bloom pack. And I'm just going to be cutting off a snippet of it. And I think it'll look beautiful if I include it here up at the top. And I also have some of this gorgeous ledger, creating a little cluster of collaged papers. And then the pocket will be on the bottom so that I can tuck a little tag in there. Oh, this is looking so cute, you guys. And then, here, let me trim off the little excess to that ledger. So this is the layout that I have right now of my traveler's notebook cover. And I want to use my pink craft paper. And I want to use it as basically a connector that will connect my front cover and that back floral decorative um, paper that we have cut previously. So what I mean by this, let me move this to the side. I'm going to add this here, glue it right there, and glue another piece right there, just like that. This will then be glued and connected onto this paper. And this way we can easily open it up and close it in right into our traveler's notebook. And I love this. I love the whole layered aesthetic. I love the functionality behind it. When you look at your cover, you'll never imagine that you have this beautiful floral piece. So I'm so excited. This is definitely not like any traveler's notebook I've made before, but I'm really happy. 
I like to layer my pieces before I take them to my sewing machine. That way the process becomes a lot easier and I don't have to be hassling with different papers and different little pieces um, coming off. It makes it a lot easier for me. So this is what it should look like. What I'm gonna do is take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to do some decorative stitching. So I just came back from my sewing machine. I have stitched all around my little wallpaper. And now it's time to start assembling our Traveler's Notebook layered cover. So you wanna grab your little paper strips and I'm going to glue them to the front cover first. Add it, I think right there is about good. Now, of course, this is gonna be covered up so you won't even be able to see this. So now that you have this piece, you just wanna fold them over, put them down, and then just put a little paperweight or something and put that aside. This is when you wanna take your little fold out portion. What I want to include on the top is kind of like a nameplate, just like that. Beautiful, so, so pretty. Then on the back, what I wanna do is I want to create a little belly band to store ephemera pieces in. Not necessarily a pocket, but a belly band. And what I think I'm gonna use as the belly band is this really beautiful decorated paper. So I'm just gonna take my glue and on the edges, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue and I will be passing this through my sewing machine since I'm going to be sewing all of the edges. However, I wanna show you how easy it is to create a traveler's notebook, a really beautiful traveler's notebook journal cover without even having to use a sewing machine if you don't want to. There we go. And I'm just going to cut the excess off. So you wanna put this aside while we work on the cover piece. So now that these paper strips are glued on, you can then glue your decorative collage portion. And now for my pocket. If you don't have a sewing machine, all that you need to do is take your glue and you can use double-sided tape. You can use a glue stick. I'm going to be using the same glue that I've been using and not too much of it since I am going to be taking it to my sewing machine later. I just want to adhere it right on top, just like that. And this also helps if you're not comfortable with sewing. This way your paper won't be moving around. And I have a sewing machine to sew paper and another sewing machine to sew fabric. So I don't mind if that little glue, if the goop, sticks on my needle because all I have to do is clean my machine and change my needle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. It's very important to open up your cover and open up these little strips. You don't want to sew them down as they won't be able to flip out anymore. You want to pass it through your sewing machine like this. Sew your collage piece in a square or in a circle or whatever shape you decide to use. And then you want to sew the pocket as well. Once that step has been done, you then want to take this piece and you want to sew around it as well. Decorative stitching, you can do line stitching, whatever floats your boat. And you can decide if you want to do contrast thread or a thread that matches the color scheme. And then, once that's finished, I will be back to show you how we connect everything together and we can move on to creating our insert. Just pass my pocket, my collage piece, and this piece through my sewing machine. I cut off the excess threads. And now what I want to do is open up my traveler's notebook. And now we're going to glue our paper strips onto this piece of paper. So just add your glue, and then you just want to press press firmly. Woo, we got close. That almost closed up our little belly band. And now we created a little flip out. And I love that. Oh, I love that so much. Now I know it looks a little wonky since there's color and this is just completely bare. I'm going to be using some vintage ledger. This is included in our paper bloom packs, the big set. And I want to use it to cover up the sewing lines and the plain cardstock. And now you want to add your inside paper and spread it so that it's nice and adhered onto the inside of your cover. Turn it over 
and trim off the excess. You could even fold it over if you want to cover the back of your of your cover. You could do a lot of things with it. You could even turn it inside and make it a pocket, but I like to save these pieces for my inside pages. And here on the bottom, I had a little strip left over, and I think what I'm gonna add is some masking tape. I love the look of masking tape. I think it's beautiful. And it kind of blends in with the ledger really well. So there we go, so that just flips in there. Now, if this bothers you in any way, you can cover it up easily. You can grab any other type of paper, and you can cover up the bottom, and then cover up the top. However, now it's officially time to sew the edges if you want to do either decorative sewing or if you want to secure them even more, and if you have a sewing machine. So when you take this to your sewing machine, you want to make sure you don't close it up. If you close it up and you flip it over and you go to sew it, you're going to sew this shut. So what I do is I open this up and I pass it through my sewing machine like this. I sew right here, I turn it around, I sew along the edge, and continue until all of the sides have been sewn on. You wanna make sure that this portion that flips open stays open when you're going to sew. The next step is I want to put my journal cover aside, my traveler's notebook cover aside, while I work on the insert pages, and this is going to be a one signature journal. I already had this little insert pre-made from a while back. It was going to be for a journal for myself that I started and I never finished, and I ended up not liking the cover, so I didn't end up creating the journal. However, I have little bits of papers in here, like little pieces of maps and things like that, that I have left over and I want to incorporate them along with the papers from the paper bloom packs. So I went ahead and I chose some of the papers to create my insert and I'm going to walk through the papers that I chose and why I picked them out as this is one of the biggest questions that I always get when you're creating a journal. How do you go about selecting your papers? Now I like to do a system of using your scraps that you have on your desk which represents this. These are the papers that I already had reserved for a journal, along with something new. So here is some wallpaper that comes in the pack. Anything that you choose, either a scrapbook paper, a type of paper to write on, you can cover it up and layer on top of them. So don't just think that this is what you need to work with. You can work with so many things. For example, here, I really don't like this little strip up here at the top from the scrapbook paper, so what I decide to do is grab a scrap piece of paper and I'm just going to cover it up. And you instantly have a different type of page by using the papers that you already have. So you can create essentially the papers for your insert. You can work with the papers that you have and then collage on top of them to highlight what you want to be seen and hide what you don't want to be seen. Here is the leftover piece of that pink craft paper that melts my heart, as well as the piano paper that we used on the cover. I also have some ledger that I want to include for my ledger pages. Some music paper, this is the full sheet that's included in the bloom pack. I'm going to be using this to create some pockets and I'll show you how I do that. I have this little snippet of some ledger. You can use this as a little flip on a page. And then I have these two book pages. You get vintage book pages in the bloom packs. Even though they're two different pages, they have two different consistencies, they are the perfect size for my insert. So what I like to do is I like to connect them with masking tape or paper and put both of them into my insert. So I divided my smaller bits of paper from my bigger portions. I'm going to put this aside for now, and I'm going to show you what I like to do to create pocket pages or journal pages out of bigger sheets. I open it up, fold it in half, just like that. Fold it like this. You open it up, and then you choose where you want to place it. So I wanted to put it in the middle. I love having a pocket page in the middle and it fits perfectly. Since I'm making a TN, it fits perfectly. And then I just grab the bottom, I fold it over, and you have 
a pocket page. Super simple and easy and really beautiful. And this music paper feels so luscious. It's nice and smooth. Now let's look at this ledger page. You can decide two things. If you want to fold it in half like so, or if you want to fold it lengthwise. I think for the journal that I'm making, I think I want to fold it in half like this. This is a really beautiful ledger page. I love all the writing on it. When you open it up, the ledger, the blue writing on the ledger matches the blue on the scrap of paper. I always like including ledger pages because they inspire me to write in my journals. When I see someone else's handwriting, it makes me want to write. And that for me is really inspirational. However, if you want to use your ledger pieces to create envelopes or pockets or tags, then by all means, just do whatever makes you happy. So now with the wallpaper, I need to decide if I want to fold it like this or if I want to fold it like this. If I fold it like this, I'm going to have to fold it into a pocket page, which I don't mind at all, and I think that's what I might do. Just to have some irregular pages, since we have lots of wide pages, smaller pages, so I'm just going to fold my wallpaper just like this. Beautiful. And then I'm going to choose the page that I want to place it in. These are two pages that are cream. There needs to be some color in here. So I'm going to see where do I need to fold it. And I think that's about good. Oh, this is so pretty. It reminds me of French wallpaper. It's beautiful. And then you just overlap it and fold it. And look at how beautiful that looks. And then once you pass it through your sewing machine, if you choose to sew or if you just glue the pockets on the sides, you end up with some really beautiful pages. I love this. This looks so pretty. Now it's time to start focusing on the smaller pages. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this over here. And I want to make this a little tuck spot. So I'm going to fold it over like this. And that creates a little pocket on the side. You fold it right in half, just like that. So you have this piece on the back, and then you have this on the front. And I love the texture that you get from the piano paper. And what I like to do, since this is fragile, the piano paper, take some masking tape. You could use washi tape if you want to put a really pretty design on here. I like using masking tape as I can always cover it up later with paper or with washi and that way your piano paper will not tear when it's time to sew your inserts. Oh, this looks so pretty, and then of course I'm going to stitch it across to close that little pocket in place. Now we need to work with this pink craft paper, and this one, it just melts my heart. I think it'll look really pretty on this page. It will complement the map, I think, really well. So let me fold this just like that. And then on this side, whatever tends to stick out, I fold it in. And you can choose to make this a little tuck spot. You can choose to make it a flip out. And do you see how you get that layered effect? And you have three different sizes of papers. So now we're moving on to our book pages. And what I like to do for my book pages is take some masking tape. And this is only for book pages that are not connected. When you want to connect two different pieces of paper together, this is the secret that I like to do. Now that you have taped them together in the center, you want to go ahead and fold it right where you creased it. So I think I want to add my book page right in between these two pages because this is a lot of white going on. And you'll notice when you add your book page, you add another color and it coordinates with this little stain that's here on the papers. This is some coffee that I spilled on this vintage blue paper. So now I have this little ledger piece. Ooh, I think I want to put it here as a little tip in or a flip out. And this is what you will see when you open up the insert. Really, really beautiful. And then the piano paper starts and we have all of the papers throughout the journal. So my insert is officially done with the placement of my papers. 
Now I'm going to go and take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew the pockets. So I'm going to take these pages and just do very simple sewing. So I just finished sewing and passing my papers through my sewing machine to do some decorative stitching to create my pocket pages all throughout my insert. I absolutely love how it looks. The sewing lines do give it an extra little touch, especially if you do contrast stitching. And I've also taken the time to go through the paper bloom packs and I've picked out some pieces that I want to use to decorate my pages, to do some pre-decorating. And you'll notice I have little paper scraps left over. This is from some typewriter sheet pages that we have included. Those embossed papers that I love. Little piece of ledger that was left over from the cover. This beautiful blue embossed paper. It's such a beautiful blue color. This is one of my favorite wallpapers. It's so pretty and I was almost going to put that on the cover. But I want to make this a tag and I want to place it either here on the front or on another pocket. Perhaps here that would be really pretty to look at. This one is one of my favorites. I think I want to put a little bit of that here because I feel like I need some type of white, kind of like a highlight to bring the light onto this page. It's very dark, it's very bright here, but it's very dark over here. So I think I wanna use this portion up here at the top and glue it on the side. And then I'm going to tear the top portion. I really like how that looks. So I think I'm going to glue it on there. I left this as a little tuck spot so that you could put ephemera pieces. It's kind of like a pocket going, going against gravity. Really, really cute. This is going to be kind of like a daily journal that I take around with me everywhere since I take my traveler's notebook with me everywhere. Oh, I can't get enough of this page. This makes me so happy. I really love that. Here's some more journaling space. I could add something here, like maybe I could add some embossed papers here. I'm going to cut just a little piece or a little strip off of my embossed paper and place it right here up at the top and leave a little piece of it like hanging up from the top so that it adds some more layers. Really pretty. And those are the rest of the pages. So I wanted to take the time and decorate the first couple of pages with you all. Definitely, definitely tune in for next week's videos as I'm going to be journaling in here. I'm so excited to finally start using a traveler's notebook again for journaling. I've missed it so much. This is definitely where my heart is and this is exactly where I started my process with junk journaling. The first journal I ever made was a traveler's notebook. So now all that I have to do is do the binding and my journal is finished. So for the binding, you'll notice that I have taken my pages and I've put little clips on both sides just so that my pages won't move when I put them inside of my book. You essentially just want to make sure that the middle of your signature is nice and snug in a crease. Just so that when you go and you punch your holes, it makes it a lot easier to do so. So I'm going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch, which is super easy. I put it in the center. I find the center of my book and I just press it in. And then I do one up at the top. Then I do one on the bottom. Now I need to take my needle and my thread. Here's my little pin cushion. I like to put it right through the center. Take it out. Make sure you keep your clips in. Don't take your clips out. And you wanna leave a little tail exposed. Then you wanna pass it through the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Just pass it through. Then you wanna pass it through the other hole. In this case, it's my bottom hole. Bring it through the bottom. And now you want to bring it back through the middle, just like in the beginning. Make sure it's nice and tight. And this is what you should be left with. Let me cut the excess thread off. And this is what you should have at this point. Both of your threads in the center, one thread going across the middle, and then two threads going across the spine. 
And then if you notice what I'm doing is I'm putting one thread on this side, on the left side, and one thread on the right side. This is so that when you tie them together, both of them will be hugging on the middle thread. Tie, it closed. And you can do whatever knot you'd like. I just do a simple little knot. I make sure it's nice and tight. And then I tie it one more time. It's always nice to double knot. All of the pages have been sewn into our insert. I think it's a really nice update to the first tutorial that I made. Really beautiful, really simple, and anyone can create a really lovely looking traveler's notebook. Just combine your papers, think of really fun ways to use your papers, and use pages that will inspire you for journaling. I cannot wait to use this book. So now what I like to do is I like to take a clip. This is a little antique clip. You can use whatever clips you have. And I like to add it right along the edge and leave it like this for 24 hours overnight. This way it models it and it becomes nice and flat so that it's ready for your journaling. Especially since I stuffed this notebook with lots of different papers, it's going to get super chunky super quickly, but those are the journals that I like. And of course, until next time, I hope that you guys have an incredible day full of peace and love, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye, and have a wonderful day.